So here we are on February 5th, 2017 with Eagles Milberg. Milberg's. Milberg. Delighted to be here. Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, we're, we're watching Brady and crew uh, having a very rough start with a very spectacular Falcom team. But it's not bothering us because we're having a great conversation about the the parallel lives we've led and the enormous uh, synergy of the interactions that we didn't know were even possible if we hadn't met today at the Flight Club. And you just came up with a great question. And what was the what was the the description of the issue that you've been focusing on? Well, the issue for me is how we become a more innovative nation, a more innovative city, a more innovative region, a more innovative community or company. And innovation is a team sport. It's not about now isolated breakthrough thinking. It's about how a team forms. The question is, how can we get optimal behavior out of a team when it comes to innovation? How do we, one, determine what the team knows collectively? Uh, how do we consider different kinds of alternatives in terms of actions? Uh, how do we evaluate that? How do we act on a collective basis? How, how do we know that we're making some progress? And uh, so the question for me is, uh, where do we uh, where do we start uh, in terms of creating this uh, collaborative model, uh, collaborative innovation model? And and he goes, where do you stand now in terms of conceptualizing the, the model that you, you're envisioning? Well, I've had an opportunity over the years to work in a whole bunch of different uh, collaborative environments. Uh, what I'm doing that's different now, I think, is that I'm trying to deal in a much more uh, distributed or variegated set of stakeholders. Yep. I'm trying to deal with government folks, I'm trying to deal with nonprofit folks, industry folks, financial folks, technology folks, entrepreneurial folks. And uh, to me, the innovation ecosystem requires uh, those connections with all those different stakeholders. So what's the best way to connect them? And what's the best way to find out what their value add contribution might be? Uh, how to form, uh, uh, you know, an outcome from that, those sets of relationships. And my current focus, as I mentioned to you, is how do we focus on clean water? How do we provide water that people that need it? How do we improve the quality of the water? Uh, it's a global issue. It's a global crisis that's going on. You know, two billion people don't have access to clean water. Hundreds of thousands of people die because they don't have access to clean water. And we have even problems here in the United States that are pretty severe. So to get that problem solved, can't solve it as a government problem. You just can't solve it as a technology problem. You just can't solve it as a philanthropy problem. Uh, what we need is how to put all those elements together, all those disciplines together, all those different stakeholders together toward a set of solutions. That's, that's excellent. Uh, I'm going to pass the baton to you, and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, talk about that question a little bit. Okay. Just point, point it to me because it's, it's vittling. The other way around, I think. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Yes, sir. Uh, it goes, you have just articulated, uh, as, as clearly as, as I can imagine, the central, central issue of how to frame, uh, fra and then frame how we're going to allow the world to innovate, not as a sole standalone uh, person, maybe more like Peter Max that you just described, but to have a collaborative effort that can integrate all divisions of humanity 
from the individual person to the social group to the organizational institutional group and, and businesses and corporations and hospitals or, or even philanthropies to the political governmental groups uh, even to the cultural civilizational groups uh, this is a the, the issue that you described of how to how to make clean water available whether it's in Puget Sound or in Flint Michigan or in the Sahara Desert or in in anywhere um, is an example of a of a major problem that has not yet been solved and where tech the, the where technology and and its various forms uh, and ways of understanding it uh, look like they're going to bring along isolated solutions that will be quite spectacular in individual areas. But the overall global problem uh, is going to require crowdsourcing of the whole planet to work collaboratively uh, to identify our human interests, to set priorities, because we can't do everything at once, uh, to uh, come up with strategies and uh, how to define the problems and the uh, hopes and dreams and the visions and solutions, and importantly, of course, how to evaluate those, those uh, even before you start, and then how to build an organization with the technology the teams, the proposals, and the projects that can qualify with a critical mass to get funded at, it, at every level, not just big grand problems, but for each individual on the planet. Each person has their own life to lead, and they can't be left behind. They need tools uh, and it would to uh, solve their own problems uh, and have those tools work in some integrated way where collectively each person's efforts in their own lives are consonant and symphonic with the overall uh, overall program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then to have a have awareness that the strategic alignment of the passion people have, the mission they have, the vision they have, the organization they have, and the execution have to be in strategic alignment collaboratively across uh, the generations, across the, uh, the divisions of, of society, and be able to look at problems at the most specific, concrete, detailed level uh, uh, and have a way of thinking about the concepts, the 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 concepts that cluster into competencies, because we know what what our goals are with respect to those competencies, and then into broader curricula, like uh, uh, where the the lessons are brought into an overall an organized structure, and those go up on top into catalogs, and before you know it, you've got a college library, like, uh, but you need a massive way of organizing all that knowledge of all the faculties and all the world. Uh, so you, I see it as a three-dimensional problem, how to fundamentally define the creative process, mm -hmm. whether it's an algorithm for technology or a heuristic for humanity or anything in between, whether it's a, uh, a, a life hack or it's a scientific method, or it's a clinical research trial. How to, how to simplify in a systematic and simple way, uh, uh, symmetrical way, I meant to say, the, the creative problem solving process so it can be understood uh, by everyone and have a common denominator framework. To understand humanity and be able to, to categorize them and group them, uh, to understand technology and knowledge and, and 
layer it in a conceptual framework so that you, you, you can distinguish between whether you're talking about a very abstract concept or a very specific detailed example. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my work has taken me from a linear look at, uh, with B.F. Skinner, kind of the human dimension of linear programming, uh, to a two-dimensional ideational scaffolding with, with my doctoral thesis and, and, uh, uh, and then in 1993, correction, in 1983, these decades just are passing by so fast, 1983, I formed the Whole Brain Corporation with Ned Herman. And we came up with, he had come up with a two-dimensional model called the Whole Brain Model and a, and a questionnaire to be able to assess your personal preferences. What I have done is taken that two-dimensional model where we've tried to figure out where creativity belongs, and I've come up with a three-dimensional model with, uh, that, that turns out to be a cube. And in that I've divided each of the three dimensions in five parts. It's a five by five by five Rubik's cube. And that has allowed me to, to build it using kind of object-oriented technology ideas and chaos theory and repeating patterns to come up with a, uh, eight of these Rubik's cubes building basement in front of me and then building and basement to the left of me and to the right of me, behind me, so that I've got a thousand rooms. And I call it the Atkinson Protocol for the creative process, the Atkinson Palace for the memory palaces of humanity, and the Atkinson Platform for the database to organize human knowledge. And so you have a, a user interface and a way of visualizing the structure understanding the steps in the functions, all related to the creative process, mm -hmm. and looking at the network and uh, of all the different, so that this visual image gives everyone a common denominator, ooh, 20 to, to <laughs> nothing, that uh, <laughs> they haven't got Charlie's Cube yet. Um, Very good. Pretty That's good. excellent. We've got to keep solving the world's problems even as we're having a disaster. All right. Let's do a wrap on that. And we